Well, if you're looking for damnation goats, creepy old men, and evil lurking in a cabin, then boy, have you come to the right place. Let's review the dark and the wicked. The Dark and the Wicked stars Marin Ireland, Michael Abbott Jr., and is directed by Brian Bertino. What's up, guys? It's time to review one of those evil, scary movies. If you remember, like, I think a couple years ago, the movie Veronica, the marketing campaign was scariest movie ever or something like that. And, of course, it wasn't that at all. Uh, now, this movie, I don't think it was marketed that way, but I just remember hearing word of mouth how scary this movie was, you know, how creepy this movie was. Let's face it. It takes a lot to scare me. It probably takes a lot to scare you, okay? We're horror fans. We're around the same campfire. It, it, you got to really come with your A-game to, to scare us, okay? This movie has some really creepy stuff. I don't want to boast it up like, you know, it's. I don't think it's The Exorcist or anything like that. But uh, it's scary. But more importantly, it's good. It, you know, give me scares, that's one thing. But give me a good story, maybe some, uh, some emotion that goes along with it, and tie the scares into that. Now we're talking. But first off, let's get into a real quick plot synopsis on this. The beginning of this movie, you have this mother, and she's grieving for her husband. And the children come to support the mother uh, because, you know, it's inevitable. Her husband, he's on death's bed. He's going to die really soon. And the mother, she's just having a really tough time with it, as she would. So the children, Louise and Michael, they come to support her. But uh, as the story goes along, and really, like, really quick in the story, we can tell that there's something in that cabin. And it's pretty much spelled out early on that it, it's got to be, like, something evil, right? They set that up along the way, and we'll get into that. But, you know, we're all familiar with grieving and losing a loved one, even before they die, you know, when the inevitable is about to happen, right? The mother... She's grieving, but her behavior is even a little weird for that. And Michael and Louise, they notice that, and they, they, be, they become concerned for her. I'm going to be very careful about what I say, because there's spoilery-type stuff that goes on pretty early on in this movie. So I'm going to tiptoe around some things. So if it seems like I'm pulling back a little bit, it's on purpose. Um, but I will say this movie deals with grief and loss and... It ties in to, you know, the doorway to either heaven or hell. And there's this caretaker in the movie that kind of sets that up. You know, she's talking to Louise and Louise is really concerned about what's going on. She started having these visions. There's one time where she's taking a shower and she literally sees her father being scary as shit. And, uh, you know, she freaks out. And then she talks to her brother and her brother's having the same type of visions. The caretaker, she asked her if she is religious. And this is where the story gets interesting. You see, Michael and Louise are atheists. You know, this is a surprise. Yes, it's a it's a, um, an evil entity type of movie. So, of course, religion is going to be in there. But what happens when you have atheist characters in a house where there is evil stuff going on? And how do they deal with that situation? Because, again, it's about belief. They don't believe. But they believe real quick. Let me just say that. I'm not saying they, they become Christians. No, not at all. That's not the point of this freaking movie. <laughs> but they believe in evil because there's this great scene in the movie um, where this priest, he says, just because you don't believe in the wolf doesn't mean the wolf doesn't exist. You know, I'm paraphrasing, but something like that. And, and I believe that is a line that's been used in the past, too. It sounded really familiar, you know. Just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Could be religion, could be anything. Uh, in this case, evil. But, as you can imagine, crazy shit is going on along the way and, and really scary stuff. And everybody just wants to get the hell away from that house, you know, one by one. And so really this is about being there for your loved one in the worst possible situation ever. It's a universal concept really about grief and, you know, how we all deal with grief in different ways and what happens if you mix, you know, a horror element to that. And this ha this is nothing new. This has been done before. Hell, The Lodge dealt with this quite beautifully, actually. Uh, now, we got to talk about Brian Bertino, okay? This guy, he's officially arrived. Uh, his first movie that I saw him do was The Strangers. Really great. 
Uh, the Monster is a, an extremely thought-provoking movie. A lot of like uh, metaphorical type themes in there. And it's just one of those movies that you can't get it out of your head. I don't think it's as strong and as direct as The Strangers. But I like where he was going with The Monster. This kind of is a, a mishmash of the two formulas. You know, it is more straightforward. But there's definitely some thought-provoking stuff to ponder over as well. But one thing that is so evident is just the creativity of Brian Bertino, and especially in terms of sound design. If you remember in the first uh, Strangers, you know, he used simple elements of just like, you know, knocking on a door to scare the absolute crap out of you. Uh, I've told this story about how that's probably the scariest moment that my wife has ever had is The Strangers. That, that knock completely petrified her. This utilizes that as well, but it has a, a much heavier tool belt to work with. It, you know, you're going to hear it through like a mixture of voices in the background. Uh, you're going to you're going to have like these chimes and stuff. You know, there's so many different sounds to work with in this movie, and I appreciate good sound design in a horror movie. I really do. I think you can tell that already. Because sometimes the sound design works better than the score itself, and I think this is a good case of that. Also, there were quite a few times where I was comparing this movie to like The Witch, of course. Uh, even hereditary a little bit with the fa family element, but also even like It Follows. There's some in imagery in this movie that did remind me of It Follows a little bit. Now, I got to urge you guys to stay with this movie. I'm not saying it's slow, uh, maybe a little bit of a slow burn, but really creepy stuff does start happening along the way, but it does feel a little bit, you might say cliche, like I've seen these types of scares before, but trust me, just stay with it because in the last act, when you combine all those emotional elements and the story starts making sense, then the scares really get ramped up. And I think Bertino drives it home in the last act, big time. You know, so much so that it changed my rating because up to a point, I was liking this movie. I was fully prepared to give it a certain rating. But the way he drove it home in the last act, wow, was, was really great. But before I give my rating, a thought, and I don't want to get religious on you or anything, but... I was literally talking to a coworker about this, about how bad religious movies are, and I guess that's debatable. I, I'm sure some of you might like, not religious movies, but like Christian movies. You know, there's, there's a genre of film uh, where they're in this sandbox, I guess, and they just make Christian films with very direct themes. And I wish they would step outside of the box a little bit, because this movie right here, it does have a strong... Uh, religious message behind it and I think you can come out the other side of this in a very positive manner and if you've seen the movie I think you know what I'm talking about but this is the way you can drive home a religious story and I'm not saying this movie is that type of movie no this is a bona fide died in the wool horror movie I'm not saying that um, Brian Bertino is gonna be, be opening you know church hymns at the end of the movie I don't even know what I'm talking about <laughs> no it's not that type of movie but as I was watching I was just saying Christian filmmakers make movies like with this level of acting that's actually scary as hell, but does have a thought-provoking message at the end. But anyway, guys, um, I'm giving this movie a freaking Trapped on an Island. This might be my first, first or second Trapped on an Island of the year. I think it was very thought-provoking and uh, just scary, too. Pretty damn creepy, actually. Great performances all around. Um, you know, you're going to be talking about this movie after you see it, for sure. I know this movie came out in, like, film festivals back in, like, August of last year, and then finally, in November, you could watch it. I can't remember why I didn't watch it back in November. I was thinking it was going to come to Shudder, and it never did, so I don't remember if it was, like, a premium price. Let me know in the comments if you guys know, but yeah. But damn, damn good movie, actually. I'm putting it amongst my 2021 fare, okay? And I know you'll give me shit, and you'll say, that's technically a 2020 movie, I don't care, okay? I, I just saw it. I'm putting it in my 2021 fair. You can't stop me. All right. Anyway, guys, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do free for all Fridays. Follow my drum drums on all my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and drum drum out.